Okay, for the third multi-view drawing assignment with dimensions, this is where you're going to be graded on modeling, but then also graded on the dimensions and how you place dimensions. If I go into the actual assignment and look at the assignment, there is not a choice of objects. You are set on the objects that you're going to create. These are the objects listed. Uh, and when you look at the rubric, what you're looking for is that you're going to create the objects, but then you're also going to be graded on your dimensions. So the dimensions and how you place dimensions, where you place dimensions, is going to uh, uh, be graded as 18 points per drawing. So that being set up, in the assignment, I walk you through specifically uh, several of the objects so you can go through the modeling aspect. There are pieces to the modeling that I want you to learn by going through building these objects. So it's important that you work your way through the videos. When you get to the actual aspect of laying out the drawing and working with the drawing itself, um, there are pieces to the dimensioning that I'm going to be grading specifically. Those pieces are what I'm going to go over right now. In order to make dimensions and follow along uh, with dimensions perfectly, if you were to open up from the dimension resource page, this nine easy steps for great dimensioning, if you follow this step by step, you will find that you, all of your drawings will come out looking perfect as far as your dimensions and what I'm going to be looking for for grades. And I will reference this as we start moving through a dimension part. When I get into Inventor, what I'll do is I'll lay out this part again and then talk about how to add the dimensions and then also how to adjust for tolerance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a brand new sheet and then I'm going to go ahead and just lay out the part. Well, the first thing that I want you guys to take note of is you want your part to be the largest scale possible uh, without uh, obviously going off the page and you also want to have the least amount of hidden lines possible. With this part, this part has a hole that is on a tangent surface. This must be visible. So we must be able to see this hole in order to dimension it. So I'm going to elect to have this as my front view and then I'm going to go ahead and create a top view. That's going to allow me to see uh, this hole as a true uh, feature and then I'm going to drop the right side view and make sure my hidden lines are turned on by making sure the style is on and hitting OK. Inventor uh, has been placing uh, automatic dimensions, but do not use the automatic dimension tool as they're not going to be placed exactly where you'd like. So what I would like to then look at is, will I be able to dimension this part and do I need all three views? Or will if I do all my dimensioning in two views, I can eliminate a view. So the first thing that I'm going to do is as I start to make a dimensioned object, I'm going to go back and reference my nine easy steps. And from my nine easy steps, the first thing it says to do is place all center marks and center lines. Well, we've placed center marks in this drawing before with Inventor, but we'll go ahead and do it. I'm going to grab my annotation tab. I'm going to go ahead and grab my center mark tool. And then I'm going to center mark the largest concentric featured object. So this curve is the largest object. Yet I then need center marks for the whole, so I will center mark both objects. I'm going to center mark the largest center object and then the curve as well. So then the top view has been center marked. I'm going to have to center mark uh, the front view for the uh, hole on the tangent surface. And now I'm ready to do center lines or bisector lines. So I'll select the bisector line tool and then I grab a hidden line and a hidden line and then just start working my way across my drawing selecting all the hidden lines necessary to create the center lines in my holes. It's important to take note that what you would want to start to see is are my center lines and my features lining up to make sure that this drawing has been created correctly. So I'll center mark this hole and then I'm going to notice that if I center mark this hole uh, as well that is going to line up correctly. So I know that that's working and then I also need to center line uh, the tangent feature. Okay, now that we have the center lines and center marks created, what we can start doing is we can start dimensioning size and location features. So when I go back to my nine easy step drawing, the next thing it says is to place smallest dimensions first at eighth inch from uh, object edge. Then it's going to be placed larger dimensions or large dimensions second at half inch from other dimensions. Four means be sure to show the witness gap. So I'll talk about these three things next here. So what we're going to do is back here in Inventor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and grab my annotation tab and my dimension tool. And I'm going to come down to this view. I'm going to go ahead and select what's going to be the height of this part. So I'm going to grab the bottom line. I'm going to come up and grab the top point at the bottom or the top of that drawing. And I'm going to slowly move out. What I want you to take note of 
is that change in the dimension. The dimension has actually changed. It sort of locks to a dotted dimension. If I keep going, it then goes back to a normal dimension and it'll lock at another point. These points are what are going to help space your dimensions. So when it changes to a dotted line, extension and dimension line, you click. That places the dimension 3 eighths away from the edge of the object. That next dimension point, if I go from the top of the part to the top of the or bottom of the part and start pulling out, notice it locks at the first point. As I start coming out, that's the second point. Go ahead and drop it at the second point. Hit escape. That is now placing this at a quarter inch away from the first dimension. So that takes care of those first two points of the three eighths and quarter inch. If it's, if this dimension is running into the first dimension, you can select it using your left mouse and move the dimension up so they're not running over top of each other. You want your dimensions to be in neat, orderly rows. What you do not want to do is cross an extension and dimension line. So if you have dimensions that are crossing each other like this, this is wrong. This is not correct. You want your first line of dimensioning to be smaller and then your second line of dimensioning to be the larger dimensions. Okay. So that's imperative that we set this up so that these things are set properly. Okay. When you're placing these dimensions, it's important that this small gap right here, this small area, this is the gap dimension, also been told that this is called the witness gap. This small gap needs to be seen. If that small gap is not seen, if you were to then say dimension from this point to this point, drag this out, you do not see that gap. Okay, that would not be accurate. You want to see the gap on both sides. That helps determine where the actual extension line is terminating on the part. That small gap is important. So as I keep going through, and we're going to go back and look at the nine easy steps. So we've talked about those first four. Place dimensions between views in neat orderly rows. What that means is you want to keep your dimensions between these views. If you need to place a dimension out here for clarity or above the part, that's okay. But in most cases, you want to keep it between the views. That way, as we're looking at the views and the views are aligning, you can get an idea from the different views what the dimensions are given. So if I were to grab my dimension tool and I now want a dimension from this center point over to this center point, that's giving me the distance between the part. I can come down and drop this down here. I would not pull this up to the top unless I needed to for some reason and dealt, dealt with clarity of the drawing. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to drop this at the first point right here. If I were then going to give an additional dimension from center to center, this being the larger dimension would get drugged down further to the second point of dimension. And then I could grab my dimension tool and go from center mark to center mark and pull this down to the first position. All right. And drop that there. By doing this, I'm setting up neat orderly rows that are between the views. If you go ahead and click on a, a dimension and it allows you to drag it and move it, um, that's, that's how you want to be able to move them around. However, if you go and click on a dimension and you want to move it, and what happens is you get this dialog that has popped up, most likely you are still in the dimension tool. And if you place the dimension and you're still placing dimensions and you go to grab a dimension, it's going to give you the edit dimension box. So what you need to do is just hit escape twice to be sure that you're out of a command and then you will be able to grab and then move dimensions uh, to different positions to affect uh, clarity and spacing. Okay, after affecting and setting up uh, spacing between views, I'm going to go back and take a look at the nine easy steps. Place dimension between views, we've done that. Now number six, do not dimension to hidden lines. Now this is a, uh, a strong guideline. I will tell you that there may be a part or a feature at some point that you may use a hidden line. Uh, but I would tell you that in most cases you can set the views up to not have to use hidden lines depending upon the views you select. So you would not dimension to hidden lines. You would dimension to visible lines to set it up that way. Now, as I keep going back down through, the next piece here would be that uh, rounded ends and arcs become radius dimensions. Holes are diameters. 
So there's a few reasons why this is set up this way. But if I were then going to go ahead and dimension, say, this top view, I would grab my dimension tool and I would grab the outside arc. That is going to be dimensioned as a radius. And generally, the inventor will give you that option knowing that it is a radius. Okay. I then need to set this dimension at a particular angle. I'm not going to pull it at a direct angle to the part. I am also not going to pull it directly down across an extension line for a linear dimension. I'm going to keep this at approximately 45, 30, or 60 degree angle from what would be a horizontal feature of the part. We do this so that it gives clarity to the drawing and keeps angles and measurements leaders at a neater angle. As I keep going, I can go ahead and dimension the whole feature. And at this point, if I were to pull this down, it would be closer to this part. If I were to pull it up to the top, this will be fine because if I come down here, this is going to give me more of a cluttered look on the drawing. So if I come to the top view here, to the above view, and drop it at basically the uh, opposite angle of the first leader, that works. If I grab Make Sure Dimension Tools Active, and I'll do the same thing for my outside diameter. All right. And then I can go ahead and grab the inside uh, diameter. Now, I can place uh, this inside diameter down here if I'd wanted to do that. Or I can pull this up to the top because it's going to be a clearer, more easily read drawing if I were to drop this to the top of the screen. Again, keeping this at a nice, neat angle from the uh, what would be a horizontal line. Uh, make sure that diameter is used for holes and rounded features radius for arcs. If for some reason you would need to then change radius to diameter, as you're placing the dimension, if you right click and slide over to dimension type, you can then change radius to diameter and then you would then give the actual diameter. However, we don't need this. That's simply an informational piece. Now, the next thing that we want to affect is in the drawing, there's a tolerance for this inside hole. The tolerance uh, for the inside hole is going to be important that we, we now note that tolerance correctly. Okay, this is the drawing that we are creating. This is the tolerance. This tolerance of 1.625 to 1.621 indicates that this hole can be anything, uh, a size, anywhere in between these two high and low stack tolerances. So this is what we're going to then draw or set up in Inventor. So what to do here is we're then going to double click on the dimension and now we're going to use this edit dimension dialog box. I'm going to go from the text uh, icon, which I believe is the default area comes up to, and I'm going to go to precision and tolerance. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find the limits stacked tolerance because that's going to allow me to stack limits high and low, upper and lower. And you can see that as I make changes, it updates in my inventor drawing. So as I come down here to the upper limit, I'm going to go ahead and type that in, 1.625, I believe. And then the bottom is 1.621. That's my upper and lower, although now I need to change the primary tolerance so that my tolerance is actually set to have additional decimal places. Once I set the additional decimal places, I can go back to the text icon and then type in text. So the, op the operation that is used to create this is bore. That is a boring operation. Sometimes people feel that way about dimensioning. But anyway, uh, a bore operation is different than boring. Uh, how you feel. A boring operation takes and removes material from the edge of the part as it's being made. So we go ahead and we set that tolerance to reflect the information given on the drawing. Another big aspect of this is if you are dimensioning this uh, in decimal, which this is what we're doing for tolerance, all of your dimensions would be in decimals. All of them will be in decimals. We do not mix fractions in decimals. Um, so what we need to do is just continue to add the remaining notes. So this 9 16 would not be 9 16 it would be in a decimal. And then we would add the drilling operation and two holes. To do that, we would just double click on the drawing, on the object, and then we can type this in. There's drill, and then I can hit enter, two holes, and then hit OK. 